Uh, you had mentioned, of course, um, Azaria de Rossi. Um, who was he? Why was he controversial? How did the team utilize him? You know, you know, today when you read even a Torah article, uh, whatever level it's on, people, rabbis, writers are always quoting secular sources to get a point across. Uh, it, it's common today, you know, but why, why was he controversial as a source for someone like the Nitzv? Who was he? Why controversial? Okay, so let's, let's sort of reframe that and say he wasn't controversial, right, in his time. That's my, that's my argument in the book. Actually, wasn't controversial, which makes it so interesting, right? <clears throat> Today, we would see him as, inter as, as, as you know, potentially controversial. Um, but, but what's so fascinating is that he doesn't seem to have been controversial at all. Um, so who was Isaiah de Rossi? Isaiah de Rossi was a 16th century <clears throat> Italian Jewish scholar. Um, and um, he writes a book called Sefer Maorenaim uh, in, in 1573. And uh, the, the book is actually a, really an, an amalgamation of three different works, um, one called Hadras the Kingdom, one called Kol Kim, and the other Imri Bina. Um, and it, it's really the third one that gets the most uh, the, the most focus. Um, the you know Azari de Rossi was very much a, a product of Renaissance Italy, and many of the intellectual you know currents of of his time, which is the beginnings of a more kind of uh, scientific look at um, you know at, at history and, and at texts. Um, and so Azari de Rossi in his Sefer Moore you know, advocates a First of all, I mean, he advocates a hermeneutical stance, you know, a, a stance towards rabbinic literature that kind of limits its authoritative nature to areas of halacha and, and argues that once Chazal are getting outside the area of halacha, so whether that be in the area of history or that be in the area of, of science, then we're not bound by what Chazal write in the same way that we are, you know, with regard to areas of, of halacha. And, and this wasn't, he wasn't the first to say this, you know, that you find this very much in the Gaonim, you know, well, well before him, but this was certainly not the dominant strand in the, in the Rishonim and in early, you know, East, in early or early modern Europe, um, in, in your more traditional communities, this became something that really becomes a, a, a flashpoint. Um, you know, as you do begin to have a rise of a Haskalah, and the Haskalah begins to focus its attention on a kind of a scientific, critical reading of our texts, they will look back at De Rossi and say, look, there was a traditional Jewish scholar, right, who was, who was writing this way already back in the, in, in the 16th century. And, and he becomes almost a hero in, 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 the, in that community. Um, and very much seen as, you know, suspect in the more traditional community. Now, in his time, it's, you know, it's interesting. That there, there certainly does seem to have been backlash against him, at least in the, the period, in, in the years following his, his life. There is a, um, you know, a, a passage in, in, in the work of Rav Chaim David Azulay, in his Machzik Bracha, which is a, a commentary on the Shulchan Aruch, which cites a letter from, from 1574 from two students of the Mechaber that, uh, that says that the work Moreinayim deserves to be burnt. Um, and perhaps most famously is that uh, the Maharal spends numerous pages um, in his Be'er HaGola de, you know, describing what he believes is the heresy of Durasi, that this is not a work, you know, that his... his you know his treatment of Chazal, his um, what it, what he sees as, as tremendous disrespect and and misunderstanding. You know he he believes that there is tremendous that is he being the, the Maharal that there's tremendous esoteric meaning that that De Rossi doesn't comprehend in, in the works of Chazal and and therefore he sees him as way too flippant in dismissing um, uh, you know the the certain writings of Chazal as rhetorical flourishes or hyperbole or, um, or ignorance. Um, so there definitely was some rabbinic um, uh, opposition to, to De Rossi early on, well before the Nitzv. 
Um, and, and we also understand why it reemerges later on when that kind of work becomes associated with people who have left the world of, of traditional Judaism. What's, what's fascinating is that for the Nitziv, there seems to be no compunction whatsoever using this work. Uh, not just using it, but citing it and citing it at its most controversial. So the very places where de Rossi writes that this, these words of Chazal are not to be taken literally, right, or that this is just, I, you know, um, hyperbole, or even where Zayi de Rossi is citing church fathers as his source for geographic information that he might have. Not only does the Nitziv cite it, but he says, go look at it. He says, go read it, right? I am Sefer Moray and I am Eliazaria Domi, right? I am Sham. Go read it. Go read it for yourself. You can see exactly what he's doing. Um, you know, getting back to our, to our story from beforehand, this was the most amazing thing to me. Like the fact that, that this is just, it, it's all over the place. And once you see it, you also understand that even when he's not citing De Rossi, he's taking a very similar type of, you know, hermeneutic approach to the work of Chazal. Um, so he was deeply influenced by the work without regard, without question. Um, but getting back to my story from before, it was now the question was, well, was he alone? You know, is was was the Nitziv this renegade who had this, you know, this this copy of of De Rossi that he was using? And the answer is no. Um, uh, Yehuda Leib Adel, uh, uh, who is the Magid of, Sl of Slonim, cites De Rossi. Erev Avram Ben Agra cites De Rossi. Um, uh, the, um, the 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 Magid of the Magid of Vilna right? um, uh, cites De Rossi on a number on a number of occasions. It seems to have been a work where in in early 19th century amongst the the core the cent the center of Lithuanian scholarship they didn't see the same kind of heretical um, tension in this work that those before him and those after him will will certainly see.